Jewish family with six generations of Jewish believers, I always knew who Yeshua was, knew who Jesus was. But when I was about seven years old and I was home alone, my mother had taken my brother and sister out of the house for some sporting event and I was playing up in my room. And as I was playing, I heard my name being called, Matt. And I, I walked outside and I'm looking for my friends and looking and nobody's outside, nobody's around. I go back in, I'm playing. And again, I hear the name, Matt. So I go outside, I start looking and, where are you guys? I, I can't play, my mom's not here. And nothing, not, not the wind, not a bird, nothing around. I go back inside, I'm playing, and third time, Matt. And I walked outside and I thought, this sounds like a Bible story. So I looked up at the sky and I remember saying, yes, God, what? And nothing, no answer, no response. And I walked back into my bedroom and sitting on my bed was a baseball. And on the baseball was written the name Jesus. Now I'm on the second floor, alone in a house. I didn't play baseball. I didn't do any sports. Yet here is the name Jesus. And I've known from that age, from that moment, that Jesus was and always was who he said he was. To never, to never doubt it. I knew that God had called me, not just in a spiritual way, but in my own ears hearing the Lord call my name and then seeing that name Jesus written there, that I would never doubt who he was. And I followed the Lord my you know, whole life and being called at the age of nine into full-time ministry and, and having supernatural encounters with God, and being supernaturally healed uh, from multiple things, from a broken elbow and from illness and the Lord doing many things that in 1997, I was at a particular conference and they called all the young people, come forward, come forward. We want to pray a spirit of release upon your generation. Now today, many people pray for young people, but back then, this was the first time in my entire life I was maybe 22 years old. First time anyone said, I, we want to pray as mothers and fathers to release you for God's kingdom. And so they called up and they, they asked all the spiritual moms and dads, please come and just lay your hands on the young people and, and pray that God would release them. And I, I look back now and I think it's kind of ironic, but a Korean mother is the one who came and actually put her hand. And as soon as she touched my back and she prayed, Lord, release this young man. I don't know anything else she prayed. I don't know anything else that was happening because I was immediately gone. I was totally out of my body, somewhere else. And um, at that particular time, I was in a, found myself in a hotel room. And in the early 90s, there was a singer named Kurt Cobain who had killed himself. And it really was the idol of the Generation X in America, was this particular man. And I recognized him and I was watching and he came and, and he, I watched as he put the gun to his, his head and he shot and I saw the whole scene very graphically of him killing himself. And then a hand from heaven came down, gathered everything, he put it back inside this man and stood him upright. And the Lord spoke this word, now I break the spirit of suicide over your generation. And I was gone again. And I was in a, a, only thing I could describe was this long tunnel. And it was living blue, like no color of blue that I had ever could describe. It was just like living blue. And, and I could see a light coming towards me and I couldn't move anywhere. And as this light was coming, I began to realize and I felt like I was, like it was like this living Daniel story and I kept looking like, and, and felt like I was so crazy almost in my mind because my mind was going so fast. I was like, hair, 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 white as snow, hair, white as snow, hair, hair, hair. And his hair was flowing, but there was no wind. And 
coming closer and I was look at his eyes, don't look at his eyes, look at his eyes, don't look at his eyes. And, and, and I was like, his eyes are like fire, no, like laser, no. The, the language wasn't strong enough and I couldn't look away as he came forward and, and he stood right before me and he lifted a sword and put a sword directly in front of me at the point right at my face. And he spoke. And as he spoke, I thought this is the sound of many waters because it was a voice that went through you and it felt like it went to eternity. And he said, now I will fight for you. And those words that penetrated my spirit and it was like a rubber band. I was flinged back and all of a sudden I came to my senses and, and I was trembling because of the, this encounter and I was just walking around to everybody. He's real. He's real. No, he's real. He's really real. He's real. He's so real. And another person walked by me, stopped, looked like, you've seen him. He's, yeah, he's real. He's so real. And I thought, never in my life can I ever deny who he is because I've seen. I, I know from at least four or five years old when my memories begin, I knew who Jesus was. It was like someone said the name Jesus and I already knew him. And I felt like I knew him in a very personal way. That even from four or five years old, God opened my eyes and I was looking into a spiritual realm and I could see Satan was real. I could see that the demonic realm was real. I, I used to be so scared and, and afraid because I could see, you know, these things. And yet then I also then encountered who Jesus was, that not at that time yet in the physical way, but in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit, a comfort, a peace. So I knew that when they were telling me the Bible stories, it was, this wasn't fairy tale. I, it's like I could know immediately the difference between the fairy tale story, a Disney story, and then the, the story of my ancestors of, of Jonah or Joseph or Daniel, of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, or of Jesus walking on water and calling Peter out of the boat. Like, it was in my heart always, I want to walk on water. Jesus is the same. I remember seeing that verse once. Uh, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I remember that was on the wall of a, of a church. And in my heart, I just, it was like, there was absolute truth. It was just absolute truth in, in, into who I was and, and being called into that. Could you tell me more detail about when Jesus coming This encounter, figure? yeah. So... Every time I think about when I, this story, it's like, in my mind, I can't describe the fullness of the, of the feeling or, or the color or, of, it was the whole experience, like this place where I was at, where I, I didn't have any thought of, of sin. I didn't have any thought of struggle. I didn't have any thought of not being worthy. I didn't have any thought of, of anything, than, but I was totally frozen and captured by this encounter. Like, you know, am I supposed to kneel down or fall on my face or can I look at him in the face? I, I couldn't even, I couldn't think of anything because even as he was approaching and, and the light became stronger and even when he was a far ways away, the spirit of him went before him. And, and it was as if, maybe like Moses when he was there and the Lord went before the Lord. Even you couldn't see his face, but I knew who was coming. And I was, I was frozen. He didn't call me to go to him. He was coming to me. And as he was coming to me and walking down and and realizing that 
I did have the thought, like, as he was coming closer, he doesn't have the appearance that anybody would think, like, is this, is this the Son of God? But it was the, the spirit of, of him was so strong that you knew there was no authority greater than this. That his hair, even, like, I felt it was just flowing because of his glory. Like, his spirit is wind. And, like, because the spirit, and they're, they're one, right? The Father, the Spirit, the Son, they're one. And you got that feeling. And how can any man look at the face of God and live? Yet God came and gave himself a face in the face of Jesus. And, and I thought, if the painters could see this, you would never have a weak-looking Jesus. Because you really, like, he wasn't on the cross anymore. He's standing there, and he was alive, and he was strength, and he was peace. He was war. He was judgment. He was total grace and acceptance. And, and you felt completely undone, and completely whole at the same time. And at this moment, there was no doubt. There was no doubts. Who am I? Who are you? Anything he said to do at this moment, you would not even have the, the, the slightest hesitation. If he said, walk on water and fly around the world, you would know it was going to be possible. And his voice, I still like feel his voice even inside of my, my being. Even the, the shortest phrase, I will fight, now I will fight for you. Knowing not just for me, it wasn't about just me, but about my people, the, the Jewish people, and, and the nations of the earth, like the God of, who is about to make war on the enemy, the, that we weren't going to be helpless. That, we, that no matter what happened many times in as a child, I felt helpless. And after this, I would f never again do I feel helpless. Never again do I feel like there's not enough faith for anything that God says. All I have to do is just start to think about this, this moment. And it's like living faith coming inside of you, living word coming inside of you.